One of the things that I appreciate about a desktop environment is all of the general fanciness that it adds relative to a dedicated window manager. So what I mean by this is things like animations, fancy bar overlays, fancy icons, and things like this. Now, what we're gonna be doing today is bringing a little bit of this fanciness over to a dedicated window manager. Now, we're not gonna be doing animations because animations are really, really difficult. What we're gonna be doing is bringing over a bar overlay. So we're gonna be doing this with a program by the name of XOB, which basically adds a little floating bar that will just overlay itself over all your applications. So what you can do with this is do things like say, show your volume level. So when you change your volume level, have a little bar that appears on the screen that shows you, oh, you're at 60% or oh, you're at 30% and you're muted. Things like this. Or you could have things like a progress bar. So as you're downloading something, it updates this little bar and shows you how much you've downloaded. Or maybe you wanna use it for something like your memory usage or even things like your CPU temperature range. Okay, so let's go have a look at how this would work. Now, one thing you have to keep in mind is that if you want, say, pulse audio integration or ulcer integration or you want integration for a download bar or your CPU temperature, everything that you want to integrate with, you're going to have to write yourself because all XOB does is adds in a bar overlay. It's not going to do anything else. Any integration you want, you'll have to write yourself. Now on the GitHub page, there is an integration for Pulse Audio written in Python, and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing on my system, and there might be some examples elsewhere online, but for anything else, you're going to have to write yourself. So let's see how this would work. Now the first thing you're going to have to do is make a named pipe, and this is done with a program called Make FIFO. So I'll just show you the man page for that, Make FIFO. Basically what this is gonna do is it's gonna act as a queue. So when there's nothing in the queue, the first thing that gets added is at the front of the queue. And then when you add something else to it, that's going to be behind it. And the first thing you added will get read first. And as stuff is read from the queue, it'll be removed from the queue. So if we just run make FIFO, and then let's just call it XOB pipe, just because that's what I've been using for my volume control. Now, obviously you probably should give it a better name than this because you probably don't want it clashing with other things you're gonna show with XOB, but we're just gonna call it XOB pipe for now. And the next thing we're going to wanna to do is actually start up XOB. So if we do tail-f, and if we have a look at what the man page for tail says about the dash f option, so dash f basically means follow. So output appended data as the file grows. Okay, so if we do tail-f, and then just pass in the pipe that we had before, so XOB pipe, and then let's start up XOB and we'll start it with the basic theme. So if we just run it like this, nothing really happens. So on the terminal, it's running XOB. The terminal is now locked up. So let's open up a new terminal. And what we're gonna do is echo the number, let's say 42 into that pipe. So into TMP slash XOB pipe. Okay, now what this is gonna do is bring a little bar overlay onto my screen briefly. And you can't actually see that because it's been put onto my second monitor. And the reason for that is because the way it does multi-monitor integration is really, really weird. So it'll put it on the rightmost monitor rather than the monitor you're currently focused on. So instead of running it with that theme, let's run it with the theme that I've actually got set up to work properly. So the way that you change the theme is by doing XOB-S and then give it the name of the theme that you want to use. So the one that I've got working properly is BSPWM. So as we can see, nothing's really happened just yet, but let's go and echo a number into that pipe. So we'll just echo 10 into it. And as you can see, just for a brief second there, it shows the bar being at 10%. So let's change this to a different value. Let's change it to something like, I don't know, 47%. So as you can see, that's showing 47%, or we can show more, we can show something like 90%, and that shows the bar 90% full. Now, I've got this pipe set up to work with my volume control, so let's try that out. If I go and actually increase my volume level, right now it's set to 48%. I don't know how well you can read my polybar, but if we go and increase that, that's now at 50%, 52, so on and so forth. So we can go all the way up to 100, and then once we actually go past 100, what it's gonna do is go into overflow mode and basically show the bar as red. Now, if we go back down all the way down to zero, now the bar is completely empty. So let's go and increase it to something like, I don't know, what are we at? 50%, and then let's go and actually mute the volume. And as you can see, the bar turns to gray when we do that, and if I go and unmute the volume, it doesn't turn back to blue just because I haven't got that working properly, but it should turn back to blue, and then once we go and increase the volume level again, now it's actually going and increasing it as a blue bar like we saw before. 
Now, after tweaking the theme a little bit, I was actually surprised by how well this fits into the theme of the rest of my system. I would have thought it would just kind of stand out as something being weird to see in a window manager, but at least with the theme that I've got set up, it seems to, I don't know, suit my system pretty well. Now, obviously, you're going to have to configure it to look the way that you want for the rest of your system theme, but at least for me, I would say that it fits in pretty well. Now, let's actually test out how we actually go and change those colors. So when we're just setting the value like this, all we're doing is just changing the bar in the regular mode. But we can also set it in an alternative mode as well. So if instead of just echoing out 90, we echo out 90 and then put an exclamation mark on the end. What this is gonna do is set the color to alt mode and set the bar percentage to being 90. So we run this and as you can see, it's gray now. So we can try this with a different value. Let's try it with something like 50. And as you can see, when we're actually changing that value, rather than just saying update 90 out of 100, it's saying update 90 out of 100 and then saying alt after it. Now, normally I'm gonna treat alt as being something like a mute, but if you're not using volume, it could be something like you're downloading something and the download's frozen. It hasn't errored out, but for whatever reason, it's just not downloading anymore. That might be something you wanna use the alt coloring for. So what about overflow then? So overflow is also really easy. All we have to do is just output a number that's greater than our maximum number. So in this case, our maximum number is 100. So all we have to do is output anything greater than that. So in this case, 110, and it'll go into the overflow coloring, which on my system is a red bar with a lighter red border around it. Now there's also alt coloring for overflow as well, and that's accessed the same way as earlier. And all we have to do is just put an exclamation mark after that. So that's a darker red with a gray border around it. Now, I don't know how I feel about this theme, but it's very rare that I actually go into overflow mode in general. And it's even rarer that I go into overflow mode and then go into the alt coloring. So that would be something like 110% volume on pulse audio and then muting my pulse audio. That's not something I really ever do. So I haven't actually bothered to fix that theme yet. Now there are a couple of options for XOB that we may wanna play around with. So the first one I wanna talk about is the maximum value. So by default, the maximum value is set to 100, but if you want it to be something like, say, out of 1,000 or out of 50, for example, well, you can just change that value in here. Now, you can't actually go and change the minimum value. So if you want to have something like maybe a CPU temperature range, so you want it to be something like 20 to 90, for example, the way you'd have to handle that is instead of actually configuring it in XOB, you'd have to normalize those values from a range of zero to 100. So you can go and look online on the formula to do that. It's not actually that complicated, but if you wanna show some values that don't start from zero, you have to go and set that up yourself to work on a zero to 100 range or zero to 50 range or zero to one range, whatever the range you wanna use is. And then if I was to go and actually modify my volume level, as you're gonna see, it's gonna appear on the screen for much longer. Now, 5,000 milliseconds seems like a bit too long. Maybe 2,000 or 3,000 is a bit more reasonable. I'm not sure what something like macOS defaults to, but I kinda like how long that sits on the screen for. So whatever that is, maybe that's probably a good number. So if someone knows exactly what that number is, feel free to let me know if you want to, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Now, the other thing you can do with timeout is you can set the timeout to zero. So what timeout zero is gonna do is basically make it so the bar will never disappear. So if I just run this now, no matter how long I keep talking for, that bar is going to stay there. So normally I wouldn't do this for something like a bar like this. What I would do it for though, is if you wanted to absolute position it so it's located in your bar up the top here. So there isn't actually bar integration, but if you do wanna have it located in your bar, you could just absolute position it so it does get put in there. That is an option for you. It's kind of a hacky option, but it's definitely an option that does exist. Aside from that, I'm not really sure why you'd ever actually wanna have the zero timeout unless you had, I guess, a dedicated part of your screen that always just has a bar on it for whatever reason. And that doesn't seem like a really productive use of that space. So as we saw, every time we ran XOB, it showed us the default config location, which is this right here. So slash home slash Brody slash dot config slash XOB slash styles dot CFG. But if you wanna change that location, that can be done with the dash C option. And the other option is obviously dash S, which I don't really think there's any point to explain at this point because I showed you it earlier. So let's actually go over and have a look at how the styling works. So you can actually see, I guess, how it's actually structured. So if we go over to my .config folder 
and go into the XOB folder and into styles.cfg. So in here, I've got two styles defined. So I've got the default style and also the BSPWM style that we were using earlier. Now, the way that these styles are defined is pretty straightforward. So we have an X position, we have a Y position, and we have a length, and then we have padding, border, outline, and thickness. All of these are pretty straightforward how these work. And when you're setting the X, the Y, and the length, they all take in two different values. So we have the relative value and the offset value. Now, if you want to have a look at how these work, over on the GitHub page, there's sort of a breakdown of how you can place the bar on different locations on your screen based on how these values are set. So if you want to have it, say, in like the top left corner, then you can see that you do these values here. So relative x equals 0, offset x equals 0, y 0, y offset 0, relative length is 0 0.3, and then offset length is this right here. And then you can see for a bunch of other locations here how this would work. So if you want to have some custom location I would recommend taking something that is close to it and then sort of playing around with the numbers and just seeing if you can get it located where you want it to be located. So as for the rest of the values though, so padding and things like that, there's also a diagram on here on how padding and border and outline works. So padding is sort of the gap between the content of the bar and the border. The border is sitting on the outside of the padding and then the outline is the final outline. So outline and border might sound like the same thing, but the outline is really the actual border and the border is the inner border. Another value you might have spotted in here is overflow. So there are two modes for overflow. We have hidden and we have proportional. So what hidden does is basically as soon as you go into that overflow range, the entire bar will be set to your overflow color. Whereas with proportional, what it's going to do is as you actually increase the value, it's going to increase the amount of alt color in the bar up to, I think, when you hit 10,000 and then the bar is completely full. Now, I'm not a big fan of proportional mode because you can't actually set the maximum range for proportional. So if I could set it to be something like 500 and then once we hit 100, it goes into overflow and then up to 500, it fills up the rest of the bar with being red. If I could do that, proportional would be very, very useful. But because I can't, I'd much rather have it on hidden mode just because it looks a little bit better. Now, the other thing you can do is you can actually change the orientation of the bar. So by default, it'll be set to vertical mode, but you can also set it to be horizontal. And when you go and set it like that, you're going to have to change some of the things like the length and the location on the screen. So I actually had this configured for a single monitor. So my length is actually going to be wrong. So instead of being 0.5 length, we'll set this to 0.25. So that'll be a quarter of my entire display. So if you don't know on Linux, when you have multiple displays, it's sort of treated as one big display. So a quarter of that will be a quarter of my entire display width, which in this case is a quarter of 3840, which will be 960. So we'll also have to go and increase this offset here. So we'll set the offset to be negative 960, and that should have it centered on this screen right here. So if we go and run this now, as you're going to see, it's centered on this screen right here. So as we go and decrease the value, the amount that it changes by is bigger, but it's still representative of what it actually takes up in that bar. So in this case, 38% would be this right here. Now, the reason why the bar is longer is because when you set the orientation, the way the length is calculated actually changes. So by having a relative length, what it's gonna be is relative to the direction that the bar is actually growing in. So if it's a horizontal bar, it's going to be relative based on the width of the display. If it's a vertical bar, it'll be relative based on the height of the display. So if you were to change the orientation, it will start messing with your calculations. So as you saw, if you change the orientation of the bar, you will have to go and actually change some of these other settings. And then when it comes to configuring the colors, this is really simple. I shouldn't really have to explain it. So we have a color block, which is encased in curly braces. And then we have a normal color block. And then we have a foreground color, background color, border color. We have an alt color block, foreground color, background color, border block, so on and so forth. So that's pretty straightforward how that actually works. And as I said earlier, you can define as many of these themes as you want. So there's an example on the GitHub page, which is basically a theme that works with the default i3 theme. So if we just copy this one here and we go back over to the config, drop this in here, and I'll basically have to also change my X position just so... I can see it on the screen that we're recording. So change the offset to negative 75. Okay, so if we just rerun XOB, but this time give it the i3 theme instead of the BSPWM theme. 
Now, it's going to look very similar to what I have because my theme is actually based on this theme, but it is a tad different. If we go into the overflow range, yeah, here we go. It's in proportional mode. So as we increase this, the amount that it's changing by is different. And this is why I'm not a big fan of it because look, we're up to nearly 500% here and there's still so much of the bar left. So I would like it to be where I can set the maximum for the proportional value, but because I can't, as I said, I'm not a big fan of this mode. So that's pretty much everything for the usage of XOB, but if you wanna go and install it on the GitHub page, it basically shows you what packages are available. So we have an AUR package, Gen2 Overlay Guru, I have no idea what that is. Nix package is stable, Nix package is unstable, OpenSUSE Leap, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, and also Void Linux. So if you're on anything else, like let's say you're on something that is Debian based, what you can do is go and download these dependencies here. So lib x11 and lib config, and then just basically run the make file. And that's all you have to do. So I think that's pretty much everything I want to say about XOB. I think it's a pretty neat tool. And if you actually like the idea of having I guess bars that show various bits of information, whether that be your volume or all the other stuff I talked about. Maybe you want to try out something like XOB. If you want to have bar integration though, I know there are better ways to do it than using XOB. So if you want it to be in something like your poly bar or in your lemon bar or something like that, you may want to look elsewhere. But if you just want something on your screen to show you, hey, you're at 60% volume, XOB might be a good choice to use. So I think that's pretty much everything for this video. But before I go, I want to thank my patrons. So a special thank you to Joachim, Nathan, Andrew, Monster, Peter, the Road, Tony, Donald, and Zilver. If you want to join the Patreon, there'll be a link to that down below, as well as my Amazon affiliate links. We can buy the gear I use in this channel or anything else you want. And I'll get a small kickback for it. Also, we can go check out my podcast. That is Tech of a Tier, available on Library and YouTube and the audio version available wherever you listen to audio podcasts. Also, remember to check out this channel available on Library, BitChute, and BitChute. And remember to smash the like button and leave me a comment down below. And remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below as well. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.